Hey everyone, it's David at Restoring Hope Church. Thank you so much for joining us. It's our mission to restore hope and make a positive difference in your life today. You are about to listen to Pastor Aaron Crabb's message, Keep Moving. Remember to click subscribe so you can be the first to know when we release new content. Isaiah 43 and 18 says, do not remember. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, forget about it. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, <laughs> I, I'll do a new thing. Turn to your neighbor, say, he's doing something new. Behold, I will do a new thing now. Uh, it, it says, behold, I will do a new thing tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Behold, I will do a new thing now. Somebody shout now. Now, now it shall spring forth. I, I truly believe that, that there's a moving taking place and that there is a season of birthing there's a season of new life. There's a season of God uh, forming something. It's fresh. Uh, I'm talking about an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. There's a new thing that he wants to do now. Somebody shout now. There's a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the scripture goes on to say, now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I'll even make roads in the wilderness and rivers in a somebody been in a dry place he's about to give you some rivers come on somebody you've been dry for a I said you've been dry for a long time God is about to wet a dry place he's about to do something supernatural he's about to open up the floodgates of heaven he's about to pour down to you blessings that you have not room enough to contain he wants to do a new thing a new old things have passed away behold all things have become new I've taken off the old thing because he wants to do a new thing in you if you want the new thing to take place somebody put a praise on your promise somebody put a praise on your future purpose So he's making a way. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, he's, he's doing it. He's making a way. He's making a pathway. He's making a way in the middle of no way. He will supply somebody's need in this place tonight. He will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, Philippians 4, 19. He is the God of more than enough. Not just enough, but more than enough. Not just enough. Some of y'all have been in a season of enough, but God is about to bless you like you have never seen before. See, y'all think I'm talking about uh, monetary things but I'm not talking about monetary things there's revelation getting ready to hit you like you've never experienced before I'm just going to throw it out to anybody who desires God to open up a new thing on the inside you can stay in your stuck place if you want to you can stay in the old way if you want to but there's something new that God is about to do and I'm not going to miss it is there anybody say I'm not satisfied with where I am but I'm I'm gonna get where he's trying to get me to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, you might hang out with me tonight. Glory. It takes the word of God to stir your faith. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It takes the word to stir your faith. If you could turn me up just a little bit here, it would help me. It takes the word to stir you, to challenge you. It takes the word of God to, uh, to motivate you. And I've been praying and asking God for this word, not just to be something that you hear for a moment, but that it would be a movement. That it would not just uh, sit in this place, but it would sit down in the depths of you and that it would come alive. 
I'm asking for the life-giving word to, to come alive in you, not just in this atmosphere, but on the inside. As faith comes by hearing, the word says, and hearing by what? The word of God. Turn to your neighbor and tell them the word's about to change you. I've come to encourage you tonight to keep moving forward. I've come to encourage you tonight that, that tomorrow will not look like it does today. That tomorrow is a brighter day that weeping has endured for the night, but joy is coming to your morning. That's for somebody tonight. I come to encourage somebody to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. I believe that God is looking for a people that will move when God says to move. See, here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. We got too many people who want to be, build memorials when God's trying to get you in moving. There's too many churches that want to build a monument so that they can say, look what we have done. But God is saying, I'm trying to get you with what I've purposed in your soul to do. I need you to move where you're wanting to stay where the monument's built. Not a memorial, but a movement. Somebody turn to your neighbor and tell them, keep moving. I believe that God is telling us not to make memorials or to enshrine something that is so important, that's so big in our life, it's so grand, we will never be beyond this moment in our life. We will never get past our past and how grand it was. Some of you need to get past the junk that you had to go through. We have to get past our past. Somebody turn to your neighbor and tell them you gotta get past your past. Because you are worshiping, some of us are stuck and we're worshiping what we have enshrined. The Holy Spirit asked the question, shall you not know it? You know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? Could it be? You, sir, you, ma'am, that God has something that is better for you. That God has something that's new in front of you. That God has mega doors that he's opening for the next season in your life. See, some of y'all don't want those doors. I'll go ahead and take them. Hallelujah. There, 1 Corinthians says there is a great door for effective work. I come to tell you that somebody is about to walk through a door for effective work. What didn't used to work is about to work as you walk in. Now, let me tell you, that scripture goes on to say that there's some people that's going to try to oppose it. But go ahead and try to oppose me because greater is he who's on the inside of me than he who is in the world. Does anybody know what lives inside of you? Anybody want a grand door? Anybody want a great door in the season that you are living in? And so we have to move past the enshrined memory of our past because you're still worshiping what used to be. God is trying to get you into a greater purpose and he's trying to get you into a magnificent future that you have not, you can't even comprehend what he wants to do for you. Remember not, somebody say forget about it. He is saying, don't let enshrined memories of your past keep you from moving forward. God is saying, don't hold on to this when I'm trying to get you to that. Listen, I'm all about being thankful to God. I'm all about looking back and seeing where God has brought me from. I'm all about that there's power in the blood of the lamb and there's power when I open my mouth and testify of his goodness. I know that there's power in the blood. I know that he's pulled me and kept me and held me a mighty long way. I'm thankful for where God has brought me from and I'll preach on that all day. But what I feel like God is trying to say to you right now, that it's time for you to shift and not become a prisoner of your past experiences. I'm talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly because I believe God is saying to those who will listen tonight, somebody say, open my ears to hear you tonight, God. If you will listen, I believe that God is wanting you to experience something that you have never experienced before. What you have experienced is truly, I'm gonna say this uh, by the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost, that, that, that what you have experienced is truly insignificant in comparison to the new thing God has established for you in this season. Come on, somebody. While you're stuck in last season, you're about to watch what God is about to pour out 
in this place, in your space, on your family, on your job, everything around you is about to be blessed if you can let go of what used to be and walk forward in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I'm positioned. See, we have to position ourselves. We have to position for transition. He is making a way in the wilderness and roads in the desert place, but we have to position our mind to, to get in line with our spirit. I believe that God is saying you must move. Don't get caught up in creating monuments that you miss the movement. Man, I love the silence in here tonight. Don't get caught up and wrapped up in what has been when God is releasing living, giving streams right here and right now. God is releasing his glory in a fresh way. God is releasing his glory and it's going to look different than it has in the past. And if you're so held on to the past, you're going to miss what God's doing now. I want you to hear me. I was waiting and meditating on God and I was up in that office and I was praying and I was saying, God, give me a word for your church, for your people tonight, for our body. And I heard three words that came to my mind and came to my spirit and it's been on my spirit for the last couple of weeks. And the, and, and the Lord said, position for progression. He said, get ready because what you're about to move into, you're going to move out of this year into next. And he said, there's a birthing that's about to take place in 2019 that is going to blow your mind. There's a shifting that is taking place and that's why you have felt the stirring. That's why you have felt the uncomfortable place. That's why you have felt that, that, that there's things that he has to shave off. There's things that he has to do in your life because he is trying to prepare you and position you for what he is about to do next. I hear the Lord saying, keep move forward. Keep positioning yourself for, for progression. Don't sl slink back. Don't sink back. Don't move back. God said to move forward right now. He said, uh, he said move in, in, in what you feel like. The enemy's trying to freeze you. The enemy's trying to oppose you. He said, but just keep on moving. He said, if you have to walk through demons and devils up to your eyeballs, just keep on moving. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, don't feel fear any evil. He said, because I'm with you. I'm with you on your right side. I'm with you on your left side. Even when there's darts on your back, I got you covered. Goodness and mercy's following you all the days of your life. He said, just keep on moving. Just keep on pressing. Just keep on pressing into my presence. Just keep on leaning in to what I'm doing. He said, because if you'll keep on leaving in, you're going to touch something. You're going to see something. You're going to peek beyond the natural into supernatural dimensions. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I'm ready to step in. Is there anybody say, I'm leaving 2018? There's been some good days. There's been some trying days. But what God has in my future, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered to the heart. I'm talking about prayers being answered. Yeah. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, keep moving. Give them a little shove, a little, little help. Say, keep moving. Sometimes you got to push, give a little nudge. It's all about transitioning, positioning for transitioning. I hear God saying it's a movement, not a memorial. Well, did you hear what God did in 1932? Did you hear what he did in Florida? Did you hear what he did? Oh, the Cane Ridge Revival in Kentucky. Did you hear what he did? And you can go there and it's a shrine. You can go there and there's a graveyard. You can go there and there's no life because God's not there anymore. Come on, somebody. God said, uh, you have to understand uh, that that was yesterday uh, and you're working in today. Uh, I come to tell you that it's not at Cane Ridge. It's not in Florida. It's on the inside of you. Uh, I said, there's a revival fire on the inside of you that can change the world. But I need 
to motivate you right now. I come to stir up the gift on the inside of you. I come to stir up some stagnant waters because the flies can only talk to where there's a stale spirit. I need somebody to stir it up on the inside and say 2018 was hell, but I'm about to walk in heavenly dimensions. I'm about to walk where miracles, signs, and wonders. I'm about to lay hands on the sick and they recover. I'm about to tell that devil to get out of my family, to get out of my children. Come on, somebody. You need to understand that the authority and the power of God is working on the inside of you. It's not in Cambridge, it's in Hendersonville, Tennessee, right here on 1041 at Center Point Road. And guess what? You've been invited in the party and you are here. There ain't nothing like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party never stops. Somebody give God praise for the motion. Give God praise for the movement. Give God praise for the healing. Give God praise for his deliverance. I need you to praise him for your neighbor right now. Because I see some chains breaking. I see some bodies healed. I see some blinded eyes open. Somebody shout hallelujah. Well, I didn't know I was going to get that wound up tonight. But somebody say stir it up. Tell your neighbor. Especially if they got pickle juice religion, tell them, stir it up. (laughs) The joy of your salvation is what's going to make the difference. Somebody say transition for progression. It's always about leaving one place to go to another place. I got to leave what I know to get to where I can grow. Sometimes you got to leave what you're used to so that he can make ways in a desert place so that he can bring a fresh river in the dryness that you've been operating in because you're still holding on to yesterday. But I just wish somebody would turn yourself loose. I talked about Elisha and Elijah's mantle being released unto him. Number one, he had to do a few things. Number one, he had to have faith to follow Elijah. How many knows that it takes faith to follow Christ? It's an indispensable element in what we would call as religion. We have to have faith to move. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You see, the problem is, is that we've allowed the enemy to put fear in us, to put worry in us, to stop us from the with words of man. Come on, somebody. And what he is saying is, now you're double-minded. I can't work with double-mindedness because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. But he's saying what you're about to walk into, there's about to be a faith rise up in you that's going to part Red Seas. I'm talking about taking giant, there's giant killers all up in this place. But I got to get you to believe what the word says about you, not what man says about you. So Elisha and Elijah's mantle being released upon him, he had to, number one, he had to, he had to have the faith to follow Elijah. He had to have the faith to move forward. Somebody say move forward. Number two, he had to take hold of it, which I preached about. That he had to, it was within reach, but he still had to reach out and obtain it. Ladies and gentlemen, in the reading the story, you will realize that Elisha could get, he had to get, to get to Bethel, he had to leave, leave Gilgal. To get to Bethel, he had to leave Gilgal. The same is true about Jericho. He couldn't get to Jericho without leaving Bethel. Are you hearing me? He couldn't get to Jordan without leaving Jericho. I hear God saying transition means everything in the next season that you will walk in. You have to leave the place you've been to get where God is trying to get you to go. 
It means leaving some things behind. There's some things that he is shifting off of you to, because there's a shift that he's trying to get you into. He's going to shift some things because he's about to shift some things. And the first stop for Elisha on the journey was Gilgal. Where you see in Gilgal, you've heard me preach the story, the story in this sermon before, where they built the monument, they built a place of testimony. There's nothing wrong with looking at what God has done and building things to remind you of all that God has brought you through. They had taken out of Jordan some stones, 12 stones to be exact, and they set it up as a monument and a, a memorial to remind them that God is alive and well. Let me tell you something. I'm glad that I can look back over my life and I do have some places where I can look back and say, thank you, Jesus, for bringing me through that and getting me to where I am today. It was a reminder. But God also in the book of ch uh, the chapter 5 in, the book, in verse 2 of Joshua, it also says that it was a place, listen now, this is not the fun part, but it was a place of cutting. It was a place of circumcision representing, and if we look at it right, it really represents transitioning because there's a place of separation that you have to walk through that is not fun, that it's painful, that you feel the cutting, that you feel the pain, that you feel the pressure come on somebody, and it's representing the transition. There's a separation that's taking place from the flesh, from the past, and you're moving into the ways of the Lord. It's not going to be fun when you're cut on. It means leaving some things and leaving some old mindsets and sure enough, leaving some insecurities and fears. I come against those spirits in the name of Jesus over your life and against your life. I come against the spirit of depression in the name of Jesus and declare that in 2019 that the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. So we are separating here and we see that Gilgal, he moved to Gil, from Gilgal to Bethel, to Bethlehem, to Bethel, representing the house of God, also representing the house of bread. How many knows that when you get it for real, you want more of what you got? Anybody that saved ought to shout it right there. When you get the real stuff, you want more of what you got. So you'll get in the bread uh, and you'll get in Bethel and you'll start studying to show yourself approved uh, and you'll start opening up the book uh, and letting it read you and work on you and change you. Uh, you want more of who he is and less of who you are. I'm glad that I moved from Gilgal to Bethel. I'm glad that it cut some stuff away uh, and there is more that I have to gain uh, than I have to leave behind. Uh, somebody give God praise for some bread that's still in the house. I know that there may not be bread over here. I know that there may not be bread over there, but I'm glad. I, I'm glad that I know that I know that I know uh, there's some bread that I can taste of. Uh, taste and see uh, that he is good. Uh, if you serve a good, good father, somebody please give him praise in this place. Uh, give him praise like you know who he is. Uh, give him praise like he is away in the middle of no way. Give him praise like he is the water you've been searching for. And if you'll drink of this water, the Bible says that you'll never thirst again. So I just encourage you open up and let him pour because you're about to walk in to something you never dreamed of. You're about to walk into your destiny, but you got to leave your history. Somebody give him praise for your purpose. Yeah. Somebody say, move, move, move. Hallelujah. So he moved from Gilgal and he went to Bethel. He went from Bethel. See, there was, there was transition. There was separation from flesh in the past. Leaving some stuff. Gilgal to Bethel. Cutting away to getting some bread. God wished that you desire him more than you desire anything else. To push the things of this world aside, to feast on the manna from heaven. And he's more, he moves again from Bethel to Jericho. 
Aren't you glad that there's progression in God? That there's 30 and you can, eat, you can feast on the bread of life and you can reminisce of God's blood changing you and, and you're saved and you're on your way to heaven, but you don't have to stop just at salvation. Aren't you glad that you can move from that place into a, a Jericho moment where, where there was a, a faith that exploded into bold risk-taking levels as you see where God brought down walls of impossibilities and created a bridge for them to walk into their purpose, walk into their destiny. And then you see them moving from Jericho to Jordan representing death. But don't stop at death. The seed has to die before it will live. Go ahead and say resurrection. Go ahead and give God praise because he may have went behind a tomb for three days, but on the third day, he arose victorious over your sickness, over your disease, over that cancer that doctors told you that that you have in your breast I come to tell you the devil is a liar I need somebody to give God praise because cancer is being uprooted in this place does anybody believe he can still heal come on somebody if you believe it then you ought to praise him for it pull his healing into this atmosphere with your worship Cancer is being uprooted because there were some walls that came down and faith arises. When you see God move in one way, you know that if he did it for them, he will do it for you. If he healed that sick body, he's gonna heal my blinded eyes. If he healed the deaf ear, he's gonna make the lame to walk. He's a blind man healer. He's a water walker. I said the water walker is still alive and well. It may look impossible to you, but go ahead and put a praise on your purpose because 2019 is not going to look what it used to look like in 2018. Somebody say shift. It means leaving some things. Lord, somebody tell this preacher, settle down. Transition requires some things. So we're moving from Jericho to Jordan and we see resurrection power. But transition will require your participation. It cannot happen by accident. You can't just accidentally move into this. There must be a desire. There must be a choice that you make to cooperate and move with the Holy Spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Not as many as are led by their thoughts, their intellect. As many as are led by the Spirit. Let me tell you something, your mind will mess you up. But if you allow your spirit to turn on, God will lead you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Transitions means trusting. Some of y'all got to learn to trust again. You had not been able to trust because of what happened in your past and you're still holding on to the thing that hurt you when God's got healing right in front of you. He is just wanting you to understand that I, I, I can't do it for you. You've got to make the choice to move. He's already done it for you. But he can't make you move. You make the choice to move. Why is transition so hard for us? Because most of the time, it's the Holy Spirit telling us to do this and to do that. And we don't know exactly where we are going. We're just following the Spirit. You ever heard that? And people call you crazy and people call you radical and people call you a fanatical for Jesus. But let me tell you something. He, he told Abraham, he said, go. He didn't tell him where to go. But when he got to the place, the Holy Spirit said, there it is. 
there's a witness on the inside of you that will guide you, that will direct you. And there's times in certain places and certain conditions and environments that are getting ready to change, but we must decide for the change. We have to move while the Holy Spirit is moving. We have to move while the Holy Spirit is stirring. We have to make the decision and decide that are we really, do we really want everything that God has for us? Do we really want all that he has prepared for you and your children and your children's children? Because I have come to the realization that there are many people who are just satisfied with where they are. Come on, somebody. There are some people that are just satisfied to stay right where you are, to pull your phone out, look at pictures right in the middle of church. We're just satisfied. We're just satisfied with where we are. But can I tell you, God is looking for a hungry generation. He's still looking for the desperate. He's still looking for somebody who has an unrelenting, undenying drive for him. And there's conditions that's about to change, but you have to choose the change. Elijah's role in Elisha's transition truly was, listen to this, playing the devil's advocate. Because he told him, stay here. In other words, Elijah was speaking as the devil would to try and discourage someone from receiving God's best. He was trying to tell him, To stay here because he had to understand, he had to, real, he had to see if Elisha was determined enough to move. There's God's best for you, but you have to make the choice to move. We have to keep trying. We have to keep pressing. No matter what is opposing us, no matter if the enemy is resisting us, we have to keep moving. Elijah wanted Elisha to receive the mantle. It wasn't that. For he had poured into him for 10 years. Surely he wanted him to receive everything that he had and he wanted more. But here's what I love about Elisha. He didn't want just what Elijah had. He wanted double. He wanted more. In other words, he had to want it enough to let go and leave the comfortable and the familiar to go into unseen places, to go to those places that are unknown. Let me tell you something. Your next place is an unknown place. The unknown place is not fun sometimes. That transition is not fun. But to get to the glory, you have to take the step. To get to that place God is trying to transition you to, it's going to be difficult because it is the in-between place. And in the in-between place is the squeezing place. It's the place that, that, that you left where you, uh, you knew what was going to happen. You, had, you left the place where uh, it was adjusted. You left the place where you knew what to expect. Come on, somebody. You knew how it was going to go down. You knew how God was going to move. You knew how it was going to work out. And God said, I'm trying to get you to a place where you don't even see what I'm about to throw out you. But when it gets to you, it's going to bless you so much. Press down, shaking together, and running over moments. There is a place where your faith is tested. And, and, and it's tested by you're going to have to leave this tradition. You're going to have to leave this thing you've gotten used to. You're going to have to leave the way it used to be. And you're going to have to get down desperate for him and keep moving forward for Jesus himself replied do one do this thing he said if you put your hand toward the plow you better not look back he said you won't even be fit for the service in the kingdom you see somebody has to put their hand to the plow and not look back at what happened yesterday somebody turn to your neighbor and tell them keep on moving if you'll just take a step you'll see that God will place a stone if you'll take a step of faith God will do what he said he's going to do if you'll take a step of faith God will turn your situation around if you'll take a step of faith there's healing in your destiny if you'll take a step of faith there's abundance in your enough I need somebody right now to give God a praise give God a faith step praise that I'm not staying where I used to be I'm not I'm glad I'm not who I used to be but I'm glad I'm not where I'm going somebody Somebody give God a going away party. Somebody give God a going away party. Because I'm not staying here. I've got places to go. I've got people to see. There's souls to be saved. There's a harvest to reach. Somebody give God praise for the harvest and for the resources. Yes, 
Jesus. So to get there, you have to move from the comfortable place. You have to move from the grumbling and the complaining. And here's what's going to happen in that place. Huh. You're going to do two things, one or two things. You're either going to break through or you're going to break down. You're either going to gain the mind of Christ or you're going to lose your ever-loving mind. That's how desperate God is to get you where he's trying to get you to go. Because he'd rather you break down to your knees to get you to look up. Somebody say, I'm breaking through. Slap three people, high five, and tell them I'm moving, I'm moving. You say, why is that all necessary? Well, it's necessary for the proving. God's trying to prove you. He's trying to prove you for the place he's taken you. It is where you prove to God by your actions and your attitude that you're more interested in following him than being comfortable. You're more interested in following him than being popular. You're more interested in his ways that you don't care about any other way. Being common. Being complacent. I've been on this pew for 50 years and you still singing I shall not be moved. Your cushion's there now. Nobody can get your place because you done marked it. What if God's trying to move you to another seat? Come on somebody. Because you, you can be more out than you are in. And when you're more out than you are in, you see everything. You're critical. You know why? Because you're insecure. When you're insecure, all you can see is negative. But when you know who you serve, and you know he's calling you, and you know he's directing your path, no weapon formed against you shall. Ooh, I feel something just shifted right there. It's time to quit being insecure when you're a king's kid. It's time to quit laying down and acting like you're a cripple when there's a seat at the table for you. Come on, somebody. You say, well, I can't get there. Let the Holy Ghost pick you up and set you there. And the table's about to cover everything that the enemy tried to call you. Come on, somebody. I need you to know right now that God is moving you from one place to another. And it's time to get secure in who you are in him. It's time to get bold in the Holy Ghost. It's time to quit listening to the words of man and start reading the word of God. Because if you'll read the word of God, it's going to read you and direct you. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I don't have to walk in a dark place. It may just be a little light here, but I'm going to step on forward. It may be a little light there, but I'm going to take another step. Left, right, left, right, left. There's an army rising up. There's an army coming out of the valley. I see bones coming together. I see institutions forming. I'm telling you the devil ain't going to have a chance because you are finding who you are in Christ. Old things are passed away and I'm walking to the new thing. Somebody give God a Holy Ghost praise right now. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! 
I feel a shift. There's been some shift, but I feel a shift. You've had to let go of some things, but you're about to gain some things. You've had to let go of earthly pleasures, but you're about to have heavenly experiences. I come to tell you that you're about to step into the miraculous. It's been a mess, but there's coming a message through you. Somebody praise him that the test is a testimony that greater is he that's on the inside of me than he that is in the world. I need some lions right now and some lioness right now to open up your mouth and roar who you serve. Jesus! Jesus! We come to worship you. Come on, slap three people, high five, and tell them, keep moving, keep moving. Stir up your spirit, tell them, like you're at a basketball game and you're winning, because you're on the winning side. Tell them, keep moving, don't quit, you still got time, it's not over yet. He's the one who calls the shots. Somebody give God praise, because it ain't over. Tell the fat lady sings, I come to tell you you uh, she hasn't started singing yet uh, God's got some for you uh, he's about to bring you through this uh, I come to tell you uh, weeping has endured for the night uh, but joy is coming in the morning uh, and what God said he was going to do uh, he's about to do it uh, through you uh, through you uh, through you uh, I see some lions I see some lioness I need you to get it I need you to receive it uh, somebody receive right now and give God your greatest praise uh, for a mega door uh, he just opened for you Woo. slap some people a high five right now just to celebrate I know it ain't new year yet but I feel a new year I feel a new year, I feel a shift, it already happened. You see, our time's not his time. And I come to tell some people that where your bank has been empty, God is filling it up right now. But it's not for your purpose, it's for his. There's some kingdom banking about to be released. There's some money coming, there's some money coming. Not for your purpose, but for his. He said, you've been diligent, you've been faithful. He said, I'm about to bring in some souls. I'm about to bring in the harvest. I'm about to form some institutions. And the kingdom's about to come to earth. Somebody give God praise, because the blind's about to see somebody give God praise because there's going to be healing after healing after healing somebody give God praise because you've been praying for your daughter you've been praying for your son I come to tell you you've trained them in the way of the Lord and they will not depart from it they're about to come back home somebody give God praise I know it looks impossible but does anybody still have hope because if you can have hope I can stir your faith somebody move from I hope to to I know so God has already done it come on praise and praise and praise put those hands together bless the name of the Lord hallelujah Hallelujah. Come on, amplify your praise. Amplify your praise. Turn it up to 10. Turn it past 10, break off the knob. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Those who have been delivered, give God praise, because you're about to be a deliverer. Somebody give God praise. The Bible says that Elijah and Elisha, they stepped on. (laughs) You know what that means? They moved forward. 
turn your neighbor and tell them, step on. Keep on moving. Don't turn back. Don't throw in the towel. Don't quit now. As Mike sings, I've come too far to turn back now. I've come too far. God has brought me a mighty long way. It would be a shame for me to throw up my hands after all that he's done for me, after all that he's brought me through. It would be a shame for me to know the God of yesterday and not know the God of today. Come on, somebody. And not know the God who holds my tomorrow. I come to tell you, man doesn't hold this breath, but God holds every breath in the palm of his hand. I'm come to tell you, your dream died, but his breath lives on the inside of you. Somebody needs to look at your dream and say, dream, live again. Somebody says, Numa, Numa of God, resurrect every dead dream, resurrect every dead destiny. I need somebody to give God a resurrected praise in this place. Come on, slap some people, hop out, tell them, keep moving, keep moving, move on, mover, move on, mover. The devil didn't stop you, so he can't stop you now. Keep moving, uh, keep pressing forward. I forget the things which are behind me, uh, and I press forward uh, to the high calling, uh, the high prize. Uh, this all started in Revelation 4 uh, when he said, I'm calling you uh, to a higher place. Uh, I'm calling you uh, to the seven spirits of God where it's the fullness of the Holy Ghost operating in you. There's revelation coming to your house. There's wisdom from heaven about to hit you right between the eyes. Somebody give God praise. Moses had to keep the people stirred. My job is to keep you stirred so that you understand that you're not stuck, but God's about to transition you from your history into your destiny. Somebody give God a praise right now. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Yeah. Somebody give your all to God. Give your all to God. Lean not to your own understanding. Been in all your ways. Acknowledge Him and He'll direct your path. He'll direct your path. He's directing you. He's leading you. He's guiding you. He's molding you. He's shaping you. He's about to take you into greater things that you've never seen. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered to your heart. Let your heart be grateful. Give it praise. So they st So two by two. They yeah, let me switch sides because that's our, this is our weak side. They stepped. Two by two, they stepped. Somebody needs to grab your wife right now and start stepping in faith. Come on, somebody. Somebody needs to grab a friend, a brother, a neighbor, a sister, or a brother, start stepping. And two by two, we're about to do this thing. We're about to move into destiny. Our history's over. 
Some of it was pretty good, but you ain't seen nothing yet. God's about to move you from your history to your destiny. Some of you were sick in last season, but you're about to walk in healing. Some of you were depressed in sorrow last year, but you're about to walk into joy. You're about to walk into the strength of your joy. People are going to look at you and they're going to say, where did he come from? Where did she come from? Because they don't even look like what they went through. I come to tell you, the trial tried to take you out, but the trial that tried to set you back made a comeback. You're about to make a comeback. I said, you're about to make a comeback. And he's about to lunge you forward. What tried to set you back is about to release you. Yeah, I said, it's about to release. It's about to release. Revival's about to release. The devil tried to stop it. He spoiled it, but it's about to release. It's already released. The glory's in the house. Healing's in the house. Somebody to put a praise on it. Woo! And so they stepped on. They stepped on. They stepped on. They stepped on. As you're stepping on, I want you to understand. As you're stepping on, let me just go ahead and throw this out there because I think sometimes it's hard for us to be a witness because we've had so much rejection that we don't want anymore here's what the Bible said in Luke 10 16 said he who hears you hears me he who rejects you rejects me and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me here's what I come to do tonight I come to send you out. I come to tell you that you've been sent. He sent 70 out, Brother Jeff. 70 out. He sent 70 out. The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Come on, somebody. How many's going to labor with me? How many's going to labor? Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs. Listen, you're going out as lambs among wolves. <laughs> oh, that makes you want to go, don't it? Carry neither money bag. He's saying you don't need anything but me is what he's saying right here. He said, but when you walk into the house and they greet you and they treat you nice and they make you a meal, go ahead and eat the meal because he's going to provide for you every step of the way. He's going to give you a meal when you need it. He's going to give you a dollar when you need it if you'll just keep taking the steps. He said, and when you start feeling your peace be tested, he said, go ahead and let them test it. He said, because when you leave, your peace don't leave you. You may feel the rumbling in the waters. You may feel the trial spirits around you but you still got the peace on the inside of you so when you walk out peace walks out with you and all you got to do is shake the dust off and go to the next place some of you has still has some dust on you that should have been shook off a long time ago and it stopped you in your tracks but I need somebody to shake it off right now and move forward in the name of Jesus because where he's taking you there's a harvest there's a harvest I'm talking about 3,000 souls kind of stuff if you catch this Holy Ghost, you're about to change the world. If y'all want me to keep going, say keep moving. Okay, I'm almost done. So, listen to this. Let's go down to, let's go down to 17. Whew, I'm feeling a little intoxicated right now. Then the 70 return, they, they return with something. Tell me what they return with. It says, it said then the 70 return right there with, right there. I can't see it. Can you see it? <laughs> Lord, heal their eyes in the name of Jesus. All right. She's got her glasses on now. Let's see. Just read that top line right there. This one? Yeah. Then the 70 return with joy. They return with joy. 
I said they return with joy. I said you're going to return with joy. I don't care what happened to you. I don't care how they treated you. Shake it off and let the joy of the Lord strengthen you for tomorrow. Come on, somebody. That's why you got to remember where you came from. That's why you got to remember about your salvation. Because the joy of the Lord is going to get you to the next place. Anybody got joy in here that you're glad that you know him? If you're glad you know him, shout with joy. So they came with joy saying, Lord, (laughs) I love this right here. Said, said, Lord, listen, listen, I need y'all to say, say, Lord. Say, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Turn your neighbor and tell them those demons that's been haunting you are subject to you through the name of Jesus. Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. I love what he says to them, don't y'all? He said to them, I saw Satan fall down like lightning from heaven. In in other words, that ain't nothing. Behold, I gave you the authority Behold, I gave you authority I've given you authority to go home to your house and run every devil out of there. I've given you authority to go home and run depression out of your house. And over all, somebody say all, the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt See, what you got to catch is you have authority. If you have authority and you know it, nothing can hurt you. Come on, somebody. See, you have to understand who you are. I'm a king's kid. I'm a child of the most high God. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm an heir of salvation. So I don't have to worry about my tomorrow. I don't have to worry about the devil and all his demons because the joy of the Lord is my strength and I'm stepping on every serpent and I'm stepping on every scorpion. I'm stepping on every evil force. I'm stepping on principalities. I'm stepping on the darkness in the light. Somebody give God a praise because you have authority on the inside. Let it on the outside. Let it in your space. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. But he said, he said, don't let this be why you rejoice. He said, you rejoice because when that roll was called up yonder, you rejoice because in a twinkling of an eye, can you imagine how fast that's going to be? Just as fast as he sent he, he, uh, he sent the devil to a hellish place, he's about to take you to a heavenly dimension in a twinkling of an eye. He's about to take you up higher than you've ever been before. You know what that means? My name don't have to be in any book down here. I've had a few books made with my name in it down here, but it doesn't amount to a hill of beans. But guess what, Melissa? My name is in the Lamb's book of life. That means I'm about to leave this place and go to 
to another place but I can't hold on to my history so much that I can't get to my destiny somebody give God praise because a trumpet's about to sound the dead in Christ are about to rise first those who are alive and remain shall be caught up if you're in the number stand up and give God your best praise right here right now for the new God just started in you This has been Keep Moving by Pastor Aaron Crabb. We hope you've enjoyed this word. If you would like to hear more messages like this one, please take a second and click the subscribe button and visit us at rhctn.com.